Father God, we just thank you for this day, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for this time. We thank you for this gathering, oh God, together, oh God, just to meet with you, to hear from you, oh God, just to reverence you, to glorify you, to magnify you. That's what it's all about. It's about giving you glory. It's about magnifying you, oh God, because you are the only true and living God. And there is no one who can compare to you. No one can compare to how great you are. Oh God, you are God and you're God alone. And you are filled with majesty and splendor. You are great and you are greatly to be praised. You are an awesome wonder. Oh God, so we bless you today. We magnify you today, oh God. We come humbly before you today, oh God. God, we seek your face. God, because we know that there's no other place that we can look to for help or for strength. No other place, no other person, no other deity can compare to you and help us or aid us in our time of need. So God, we look to you today. For you are the only help we know. God, we can search all over. And still won't find nobody. Nobody is greater than you. No one is more holy than you. No one is more righteous. No one more faithful. God, we just want you to know today that we love you. We love you because you first loved us.
lift up the heavy hands.
And you know what we need today. So Father, have your holy way in this place and let your glory be revealed. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on and bless the Lord God. Hallelujah, as we take our seat in the presence of the Lord God. At this time in the presence of the Lord, Sister Shaw is coming with the announcements. Amen. And Sister Keisha will follow her with the vision for her hope. Amen. God bless you.
God pray for the nation. Glory is so great 
that Moses said, look, if you don't go with us from this place, don't remove us from this place. Right. Because how will others know that you are with us and that we are yours and that right. you are our people, that, that you are our God and that we are your people? How will others even know if your glory doesn't go with us? Mama. We're about to read something in the text. And I'm only going to actually work from one particular passage of scripture. But I want us to see how important the glory of God is. It's so amazing nowadays we're having so many church gatherings without the glory that yes. most people don't even recognize That's the glory it. is going. That's it. That's it. My God. But the sad thing about it is if there is no glory of God, there can be no real deliverance. That's right. That's right. If there is no glory of God, come on, Pastor. There can be no real healing. That's right. If there is no glory of God, there can be no real salvation. Shit. We need the glory. Yes, of God. we do. Yes, we do. Amen. Turn with me to Exodus 33. Ma, 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 ma. I know I have to say in this in this frame. I'm trying not to get outside of the little video camera, but. But I'm going to be moving around a whole lot this morning, so just stick Amen. with me. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Make it hear you. Exodus. Mm. Go all the way to the front of the Bible. Lord, I thank you for this word. Yes, Lord. Thank you for this small message. Exodus 33. Flip all the way over. For a moment. Jesus. To verse 13. Exodus 33. 13. And this is Moses speaking to God. The Bible says this. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, it says Moses, Show me thy glory. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Mm. And he said, this is God responding to Moses, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. That's his glory, says. Yes. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me. I need you to focus on that for just a yes. second. There is a place. Come on. Ah, not every place will work, but I have a specific place yes. that has been prescribed for you. There is a specific place by me. Yes. 
and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff, O oh my God, of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Yeah, yeah. Our subject this morning, I simply want to speak about positioned for his glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, positioned Lord. for his glory. You may be seen. Oh, have your way, God. Presence of God. Positioned for his glory. Positioned for his glory. Uh -huh. Moses was bold enough to ask the Lord to do something quite unique. Show me your glory. My. Yes. Out of all the things he could have asked for. Yes, yes. God, show me your glory. Uh. Oh. I have always been jealous of Moses. I must confess, I've always been envious of Moses because it seemed like he got a chance to experience a lot of things that most of us yeah. today struggle to experience. Yeah. Right. Right. I was always jealous of Moses. As a matter of fact, years ago, back in 1991, whatever, when I, when I began to read and study about Moses, I was always envious and I said, God, I want to experience what Moses experience with you. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that is the thing that fueled my passion, glory to God, in the earlier parts of my seat. It was because I, I saw all that Moses experienced when it came to the glory of God and the relationship, and it made me want that type of relationship. I wanted to be the man that God could speak to face to face. I was always blown away by, by Moses' relationship with God. It was always to me a very unique and special relationship. Yeah. I know people talk about David and they talk about uh, Abraham and they talk about uh, Noah, but, but I, I'm here today to talk about Moses. I was always envious of Moses. I love the fact that David brought up the Ark of the Covenant and he had a special relationship and he was a man after God's own heart. But there's something about this relationship with, with yeah. Moses and God that always made me just kind of want to emulate that type of relationship. Yeah. Yeah. He spoke to, to Moses face to face. Hmm. He didn't speak to everybody face to face. Yeah. Moses had something very unique and, and something very special that I actually wanted. Right. <laughs> Jesus. I love the fact that if you talked about Moses, Moses didn't even have to get you back. <laughs> come on, Pastor. God just said, I need y'all to come up here. Yeah. Yes, yes, and I'm going to let me deal with y'all because y'all think y'all can talk about this man because he yes. married this tough shy woman. Let me tell you right now, I'm not going to let you talk about my servant. Right. Oh my God, that got me on fire for God. It's like, I want to be like that. There's somebody, glory to God, talking about me behind my back that God would just deal with him. I love that. That was cool to me. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't even have to go and fight anybody. I'm telling you, Moses had this relationship, but then at the same time, he was so humble. Right. No, God, you struck her with leprosy. Please mm. let me intercede. Mm. Moses. Okay, I know the people are stiff-necked, and I know you can kill every one of them, but, but please, God, don't do this. He was stuck between God yes, and the people. Yes, right. I was caught up in Moses, and to this day, I still admire Moses in the Bible, probably more glory to God than, than any of the Old Testament. Hallelujah, glory to God, men of God. Moses was unique, even though he did not even get a chance to go into the promised land. Mm. He's still kind of my mentor. Here, Moses once again stands up and God says, you have found grace or favor in my sight. And Moses says, okay, if that's the case, then show me today, yeah. right now, yeah. your glory. Your glory. Wow. What is the glory of God? 
Come on, Pastor T. And why would he ask for the glory of God? The glory of God, hallelujah, is more than just this goosebump right. feeling, tingling sensation yeah. that you get in the church service yeah. when everything is in a high praise or high emotional moment. Right. Mm -hmm. Glory is deeper than that. The glory of God. It has to do with his glory to God, with the beauty of his spirit. It has to do with the beauty of his spirit. But then it has to do with this beauty that, that just emanates glory to God. Hallelujah. The essence of who he is yeah. or his character. The glory of God, the word glory normally means weighty, but when you're speaking about the glory of God in a simple definition and term, it is simply the essence of who God is, the thing that makes him God. Yes, that's it. The thing that makes him God. Everything about his character, everything about his nature, his glory, the essence of who he is, his holiness. Yes. That's his glory. The beauty of his holiness, his power, his majesty, his dominion, everything that makes him God, yeah. his glory. And that's why when Moses says, he says, glory to God, show me your glory. The first thing God says, okay, I'm going to make my goodness yeah. pass. Yeah. <laughs> my God. When you speak of the glory of God, you have to understand it's also talking about the goodness of God. And for somebody in this room that thinks you never encountered the glory of God, when you did not know how things were going to work out, and you did not know glory to God, how things were going to turn around and, and it looked very dim and, 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 and grim for you. And all of a sudden, something happened supernaturally yes. around you. And somehow God just worked it out yes. and fixed the situation. That yes. is his glory. Yes. When you couldn't stop sinning and doing the things that you were doing, and God came through and took away the appetite of sin and changed you and made you whole and filled you with His love, that is His glory. Yes, it is. Come on. It is His goodness. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes, it is. My God. The glory of God. And Moses wanted to see His glory. Jesus. Show me your glory. Show me. Show me the thing that makes you God. Mm -hmm. I want to know you in a more intimate way. I want to see you as you are. God says, I will do something. I will put you in this cleft. He said, there is a place mm -hmm. by me. Mm -hmm. This is what I must do. Mm. Oftentimes, there are people that are asking for the glory. Yes. But I'm learning in this moment, we have to get in position. That's good. We have to get in position for the glory. And oftentimes, we are saying, God, I want you to do this. God, I want to move. We talked about it just a while ago. Yeah. They sung about it for about 10 minutes. Yeah. They, they talked about a move, a move, a move. But the question is, are we in position yeah. for a move? Come on, Pastor. What place are you in? What position are you in? Let me tell you about the glory of God. It doesn't matter how many demons are trying to plague your life. When the glory of God comes into your household, the glory of the Lord will run out every uh -huh. demon and demonic force that's in your life. When the glory of God comes in, sick bodies are healed. When the glory yes, of God indeed. comes in, the enemy has to flee yes. out of your presence. When the glory of God comes in, everything is changed. Everything. Jesus. But are you in the place or are you in the right position for glory? Because the way we live in this life, there is always something trying to knock us out of the right position. There is always something that's trying to shift us from the proper place. Here, God speaks to him. Hallelujah. He speaks to him about a physical place. There is a place by me. Uh, yes. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Are you in position yeah. or in the right place yeah. right now for God to show up in your life? Wow. What is your spiritual posture right now? Are you in position for God to deliver your household? What place are you in? Come right on, now? that's good. We yeah. want the glory, but what place are you in right now? That's I gotta good. speak glory to God about places because placement with God is everything. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Come on, today. 
you talk to, they will say, I'm in a different headspace. <laughs> yeah. Come on, talk about it. they will speak to, they will say, I'm in a very agitated headspace. You're in the wrong place. That's it, yeah, yeah. There are some people right now that will say, I'm in a place of unforgiveness. Yeah. Lord, yeah. let me speak about that for yeah. just a moment. Well, you yeah. cannot expect the glory of God to come in and move, but you're still hanging on to things that people have right. done to you 20 years ago. Come on, here. You That's cannot right. live with unforgiveness in your heart and expect the glory of God to come in the way that you are wanting the glory of God to come in. Jesus. Mm. Come on. You must learn to let go of things that have offended you and things that people have done to you. Yeah. Forgiveness right. is not saying glory to God. Okay, I just won't mention it today. Right. Come on. Right. Come but on. the next time something stirs me up, I'm going to bring it up. That's it. That's it. Unforgiveness means that I release the person from the guilt of the offense of what they have done to me. And now, hallelujah, I free them. That's it. And in doing that, I free myself. That's it. Yourself. Come on. More than Come anything. On. Come on here. We as a church are ready and want to move of God, but what place are you in? There are some people that are living in the place of carnality. Yes. I'm in a, I'm in a pet space or in a place of just the fulfillment of my flesh. Yes. But how can you expect a move of the glory of God when you are not in the right place? Right. <laughs> there are some people that are in the place of just chasing. Right, 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 right. Those are the of chasing. Right, right, right. But not me, my man. You can't find any and have an encounter with the glory because yeah. you're chasing the man instead it's of chasing the presence of God. Yeah. When you be saving on the glory of God and you want to move of God, but we're not chasing after God. Come on. Hallelujah. Are you in the right place for the encounter of God that you are so desiring? Yeah. Jesus. That's it. My, 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 my. I'm almost done. <laughs> because the glory of God can transform your life in one moment. Yes, it can. And everybody's sitting around wondering, how come I don't feel a transformation in my life? How come I don't see a move of God? Could it be that you are out of position? Yes. Right. Yes. That's Could good. it be that you are in the wrong place? That's good now. Could it be that you have the wrong posture? Right. I'm so overwhelmed, and I'm so anxious, and I'm so worried, and I'm so concerned about life. I'm still trying to get ahead, and therefore, I'm chasing everything else instead of the presence of God. And I'm telling you something now. God loves to be chased. Yes! Yeah, yeah. Yes! God loves to be sought after. Yes, he does. God loves to be pursued. I feel this. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. God loves, hallelujah, hallelujah, to, to, for you to be in the run after him and, and chase after him. That's why I love Uh, where is 
the glory? Where is the glory like we see in 2 Chronicles chapter 7? Yeah. Hallelujah. That when Solomon had made an end of prayer, hallelujah, yeah. the fire came and yeah. consumed the offering yeah. and the glory of yeah. the Lord had filled the temple and the priests could not even come in yeah. to do their service. Flesh could not even operate because the glory had taken over. We have gotten so used to yeah. the church, yes. hallelujah, and we can, we've gotten used to a symbol that we lose yeah. sight yeah. of the glory. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Woo. That's it. Right. That's right. it. Come on. Where is the glory? Where is it? Where is the glory Jesus, of God? Jesus, help us, Lord. Ooh, yes, God. Are you in the place? Ooh, Are you in the proper position <laughs> oh, God. for God to say, I'm about to move my, 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 my. I need you to stay Ooh. right here. I'm coming to where you are. Yes, Lord. And, and the principle that I got out of that text, uh, the principle I got out of that text is that number one, Moses was very obedient. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, 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 yeah. He said, there is a place yeah. <laughs> near me. Yes, he did. Not the place that you pick. Right, right. Come on. Not what you want to do. I'm going to pull from principle. But not the thing that you want to do. It's amazing how we want God's glory, but we want to give him the orders on how we think yeah. he should manifest himself. Yeah, uh, what we want him to do. If God says, I'm calling you to 5 a.m. in prayer, yeah. because I'm going to show up in your prayers. Mm. I'm sleeping. I'll give you my order two days now. <laughs> right. I'm tired. Uh. If God says, I need you to stay in this posture of peace. I need you to stand on this one word. I'm about to show up to where you are. Woo! I know. Okay, God, you can get on my nerves again. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to keep this word. She, she's hitting my flesh. Come on, Pastor. You see how you keep allowing things to move you out of the place yeah, that's and the it. posture, the, pr the proper posture for God to manifest himself. There are many people even right now, I'm telling you, I keep hearing this unforgiveness going off in my spirit again. So I say, it's many people that are still sitting there and praying and saying, oh, I want God to transform something in my family. I want to see a move of God. But you are still hanging on to unforgiveness yeah. and animosity in your heart yeah. towards somebody. Let me tell you now, it is time for you to let that thing yes, go. You should not be holding somebody for something they did. Hallelujah. And offending you because you don't want God to hold it over you. That's it. That's it. Come on today. Woo! How can you expect God to give you his glory? Yeah. Hallelujah. You're praying for something that you desire, but you don't give God what he desires. God does not want you to hold anybody captive. That's right. That's what they've done. That's it. That's it. That's real. Hostage. That's it. My God. But it hurt me. <laughs> Do you not know how many times we hurt God? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, it hurt me what you did to me. Come on, Sister Keisha. Don't think about yourself when you're doing it though. It hurt me what you did to me. Come on, Sister Keisha. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. Jesus. Do you know how many days and years and months we have offended God? Come on, day. every day, every day, every day, every day. But you want God to forgive you every, every time? Yeah, yes, every time. Every time you mess up, you Please, want God to forgive you. But when somebody else messes up in your life, right. you can't forgive them. Right. Forgiveness means the slate is clean. Please. Oh, I feel like I'm going to look deeper in the definition. Forgiveness is that I treat you as though it has never ever happened. Because that's the way God treats you. Yeah. As far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions from us. He doesn't remember it anymore.
the fact that the next morning, watch this, in chapter 34, I want you to see some of the benefits of the glory of God. Woo. Yes, Lord. In verse, in chapter 34, in verse 1, and the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two, watch this, hew thee two tablets of stone like unto the first, because he broke the first ones. Right. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. Now verse 2, and be ready in the morning. Not right now. Mm -hmm. And be ready in the morning yes. and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. Mm. Ah. Mm. Yes. Let's see that Moses show up. Right, right, right. And no man shall come up with thee, yes. neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks or herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. Somebody shout obedience. Obedience. He did what God said. Yes, he did. And Moses rose up early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning. Yes. Moses wasn't hitting his news button. Right. Come on here. Come on, here. Moses wasn't saying I need about five more minutes. Right. Because whenever you're in a moment to where you're about to have an encounter with the glory of the Lord, it's very important that you follow his prescribed orders. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. But this also shows the value of who God is and was in Moses' life. Because he would go through the steps of obeying God in everything. That is a sign of the value of God. See, when you find people that are always trying to compromise and tailor and redo what God has told them to do, that is a sign that they don't have much value right. in God. That's it. God, I want to do some of the stuff you said, but I don't want to follow it to um, a prescribed yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. If you are a doctor, glory to God, hallelujah. And, and when you go to the doctor and your doctor writes you a prescription, hallelujah, and they say take two of these every day for the next 14 days, yeah. and you go and you just take two for seven. Right? It's not the doctor's fault that the symptoms start to come back That's and it. your issue come back. Normally, people start taking the medicine when they feel it. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, glory to God. But there is a reason why the prescription was given for 14 days because the whole goal of the thing was to completely annihilate and wipe out the issue that you came to the doctor for. Right. It's amazing when it comes to God, we want him to deal with come the on. issues and the root causes come and the symptoms of the things. But whenever God gives us a simple That's instruction, we can't stay in position. We just stay with God long enough That's until it. we can start feeling better. Oh God, I thank you that you did some of it. That's all I need. I need it. And go right on back to doing the same stuff you used to do. But you missing the glory yes. of the Lord by not following him wholly and fully. That's it. Oh yes. Who I feel like preaching this but we miss the glory of God. We miss the real transformation. We, we miss the change because, glory to God, we're trying to shortcut the things right, of God. Right, right, right. Isn't it amazing that we don't shortcut anything that brings us personal pleasure? But when it comes to the things of God, we will always find the shortcuts. Right. Moses got up early in the morning, early, took his little tablets and obeyed the Lord. It actually, it actually required some labor huh. uh, because he had to hew out two tables of stone. Mm. That meant Moses had to spend some time yes. working and chiseling and hitting right. and shaping because the two tablets were not just two tablets that were just like on the ground. He had to hew it out of stone and put some intensity behind it. Right. But I'll do it for the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Watch the Lord. The word of the Lord. Uh, watch in verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, hallelujah, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy 
for thousands, forgiving the iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Because now here comes the glory yeah. of God. Oh yes, oh yes. You want to know who I am? <laughs> you want to see me in power? Mm. I will not let you look upon my face. Yeah. Here I come, <laughs> Moses. You are right where you're supposed to be. Yes, that's it. You are right in position. Now let me give you the revelation of who I am. Come on. That's the important part. I want yes. you to catch up. See when you get in the proper come position, yes. and when God manifests. His glory, he will start to reveal to yeah. you who he really is instead of who you think he yeah. is. Because there, that's a dangerous place to live in. Because sometimes we've grown up on grandma's version of God. Oh, there may not necessarily be the real version of God. But then we grow up on uncle's version of God because we have not had the encounter of God ourselves. And we have grown up, glory to God, taking the TV's version of God, which is a loose pimp God. I don't know what kind of God that is. All of these different watered down thoughts. Versions of God, hallelujah. So you like you pick the God that you think that is more comfortable for your lifestyle. But whenever you really position yourself to say, "Show me your glory," God will come and clarify and clear the air. He will come and make sure that you have a real revelation of who He is, and nobody will have to tell you nothing. You will know that He's a holy God. You don't have to debate back and forth on whether He's holy or not, whether you can drink or not, whether you can curse or not, whether you can have sex or not.
chitlins. <laughs> but you don't know pastor. Right. First lady like chitlins. <laughs> you will never see pastor eating a chitlin. <laughs> I don't even say chitlins, whatever. I'm telling you right now. My whole goal in life is to avoid something that smells like that. That's this. right. I don't care how much hot sauce you put on it. It's still just like I don't know how to fit my chitlin eaters, but, but, but at the end of the day, don't offer me any chitlins and expect me to be happy with my presentation because you're going to get an injection because that is not Carl Williams. Right, okay. That's you, it. You got to at least start with the wrong person. That's it. Uh, and it's amazing. There are some things that we put God's name on that does not lie with God because right. we don't know His ways. So we will present to Him something that has nothing to do with the identity of who God is and say it's God. Why? It's because many do not know Him a person. Yes, that's it. That's it. Thank you, dude. I'm almost done. We want the glory. Yeah, yeah. Show me your glory. Yeah. Reveal who you really are. Yes. Moses is in this place. Yes, uh, I'll teach you the rest of the story. I'll run through it real quickly. He goes on and God continues to reveal to him oh, what yes, he's yes. about to do. Yes, he yes. says, I'm going to drive out the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Jebusites. Yes, yes. I'm going to do all oh, of these things. Yeah. Hallelujah. Which that lets me know when he got in the glory yeah, of God, yeah, yeah. God started telling him about the future, yeah, yeah. about what yes, he's yeah. about to do to his oh. enemies. Oh, y'all miss that scene. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. When Moses began to hear, God, go home and read my promise you it's in there. Yes, he yes. began to tell him what he's about to yes, do. Yes, he's he going to drive out the enemies that were in their promised land. Yes, in other words, he was letting him know, I'm going to deal with the enemies that are in the place that I promised you. Yes. And I'm going to glory to God, do a mighty work. But then he begins to give him further instructions on what he likes and what he doesn't like right. and what pleases him. Right. And Moses had the responsibility to take down That's the right. commandments to the people. That's right. That teaches me that when you get in the glory of God, it's not just for you. you. God on. will give you something that will transform yeah. somebody else's life around you. He will give you his mind. Oh, I feel like preaching now. So that you can give his mind yeah. to somebody else that's far away from God. Whenever you get in glory, yeah. God will get to reveal himself to you and transform you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes. Why do you want his glory? Oh, you gotta go deeper than God. Give me a new house. God, give me a new car. No, no, no. That's shallow. Yes, you know yes, yes, God, yes, I want to yes, know you. Show yes, me your glory. Yes, God, I'm not asking you for material things. I'm not asking you for a new job. I'm not asking you for a new car. I'm in a place that I'm so desperate right now. I just want to know yes, you. Show me your glory. But it gets so good. Moses stayed in his presence. Yes, he did. Forty days yes, and forty did. nights. Yes, he did. Did not eat one chicken wing. Come on here. Woo, come on, come on. Are we struggling? He had no food. <laughs> Nothing to drink. We struggling. We struggling. Uh, come on. Forty days. Forty days. And forty nights. Yes, he did. Then let me know that flesh. Come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Come on. Flesh dies in the glory yeah. of God. Oh, this little stuff that I thought I needed in my flesh. Now that I'm in the presence of the glory of God, I don't need this natural stuff. Hallelujah. I'm not running after my men and after my woman and my life is miserable and I don't have this and I don't have that. The reason why you complain so much is because you haven't gotten in his glory. But when you start to live in his presence, yeah. that flesh starts to die away. That's it. That's it. Days and 40 nights, nothing to eat or drink, and Moses did not complain because he was sustained in the presence. Glory, yes. Woo. Oh, God. Oh, God. oh, God. Oh, God. Nothing else matters. See, whenever you don't live in the presence of God, Come on. all you have is your, your fleshly That's appetites. it. That's it. That's your, it. Your fleshly apology disgust. Yeah. Mm. Your fleshly agitation. Yeah. You're, you're, you're easily, you're agitated, you're frustrated, uh, complaining, you're, you're, you're not content, you're not happy, you need this to change, that to change, you need that to get fixed, and this to get fixed. You are so preoccupied with the world because you are not living in his presence. Right. That's it. That's it. 
Oh, I wish I could see hmm. what Moses saw. Yes, God. 40 days Ooh, and 40 long. nights wow. over a whole month mm -hmm. Come on. just in the presence yes, of God. Yes, Lord. Woo. Wow. You ain't worried about what my husband ain't doing. Nothing. What my wife ain't doing. Come on, come on. Woo. She didn't cook today. She didn't do this today. Yeah. He didn't pack him in the back today. <laughs> this person on the job making me mad. Yeah. This person at the grocery store almost ran me over. Blah, 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 blah. All the worldly stuff and yeah. the appetites, they seem to fade away, away in the presence. Come on. Come Even on while I'm talking, somebody said, oh my yeah. God, that sounds like fantasy, Pastor. No, it doesn't. Yeah, that's what they you say. You know the reason why? It sounds like fantasy. They say it. They say it. Because you have never visited. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm the same thing with the Old Testament dispensation. Mm. I'll move to the New Testament. Come on, just a second. come on, Pastor. Because it should be even greater. Yeah. I believe that you have a Holy Ghost. Say something. Say something. Come on. You better teach today. And Bible scholars. You yes, better help he's somebody. He's the Old Testament dispensation. Yes, but I can shift it right over to come the on. New Testament where it should be come even greater on. because now he has left us a comfort. Yes, he has. Yes. Come on and again. Africa, a go between. Yes. A stand by. But what benefit is that? Come on, right. 
What benefit is that? Wow. To those around you. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. What benefit is that for those around you? I don't even tell them about how bad you think life is. Right. Because you are so miserable. Oh, but what benefit is that for those that are around you? Yeah. In your circle. That's right. Your family, your family, your friends. When was the last time you lived so much in the presence of God that you came down and looked at your children and said, God told me, son, don't walk this way. Right. Right. God, right. don't go this way. Right. God told me that this is who you are, and I'm going to promise yeah, I can tell you what God told yeah. me. See, you don't get that. Come because on. glory to God. You, you got to go up to the glory of God to bring down something. You got to go up. You got to go up. All you do is tell them about your complaint and tell them about your frustration. You got to go up. You got to go up. You got to go up. Come on. Yes. Yes. Woo. Come on. Jesus. That's good. Come on. I'm almost done. That's good. 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 When it comes to the glory of God, That's Moses good. was in his presence. Moses did not come down talking about himself. That's it. As a matter of fact, Moses was glowing and he yes. didn't know it. Yes, that's good. He was just giving the, the mind. Ooh, it ain't God. even about you. Come Ooh. on. Jesus, that's good. Oh God, oh God, oh God, help us, Lord. Ooh. That's help good. Help us, God. Help us, God. Verse 33, until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off. Until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that that which he was commanded. So obviously, this wasn't just a one time occurrence. <laughs> yeah. hmm. this, this, this is constant communion yeah, with God. Is. Yeah, it is. He came into the presence of God, got something, and brought it back out mm -hmm. to the children. Mm -hmm. What place are you in right now? Pastor, I'm in a place of frustration. Pastor, I'm in a place of hurt. I'm in a place of just being anxious. I'm in a place, but yes, I'm in the right place. Those places that you're in, those, those places don't position you for the glory of God. I'm in a place of carnality. It's all about my flesh. I just want my flesh to be met. My flesh, flesh through sex, flesh through this, flesh through this. Flesh, 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 flesh. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Flesh, flesh, flesh. I'm in a place of flesh. I got I'm in a place of indecisive. I'm in a weird place of indecisiveness. I'm very indecisive. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the scariest place. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, it is. Because at that moment in time, who's going to determine which way you go? That's it. That's it. Where will you end up? Where will you land? Mm -hmm. feel I really feel the reason why God has given this word mm -hmm. is because. He's setting us up for something yeah. great. Yeah. And yeah. whether you know it or not, sometimes yeah. God uses hardship. Yes, he does. Always. To push yes. you in the right yes, place. Yes, he does. Sometimes God will take the thing that you love yes, and shake your life up. Yes, he will. Just to get your attention. Yes, to put you in the right place. Yeah. So that he can move in your life. Yeah. And reveal to you his glory. That's it. And I ask the Lord, God, today, in the new dispensation, let me consider that place. Let me tell you, that place is in Christ yes, Jesus. It is. Oh, my God. Yes. Hallelujah. That place is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes, when you get in that place in Jesus, oh, my God. He is the king of glory. When you get in that place in Christ Jesus, you start to experience the glory of the Spirit. When you get in that place in Christ Jesus, you understand who you are. When you get in that place in Christ Jesus, your purpose will be revealed. When you get in that place in Christ Jesus, the flesh is now dead and crucified. And you have now been resurrected to a brand new creature. When you get in Christ. See, the Bible did not say be around Christ. It said in Christ. Yes. That's right. That is a holy connection yes, through it is. faith. It is a union. It is a connection to God that brings you into oneness with God. Paul says, I'm going to receive it. Yeah. Whether I have little, whether oh, I have much, I'm going to receive it. I'm going to be content. I'm yes, I do. But the body of my own face, I know, I know, because here it is, I can do all things. Oh, okay. yeah, all things. He said, through Christ. Christ. Strength. Strength. That's yes, God. Doesn't matter what's going on around me. Yeah. Doesn't matter what my bills look like. Doesn't matter what my marriage looks like. Doesn't matter right. what my whole life and my job looks like. It doesn't matter when I'm in Christ. There is a strength that's made available yeah. to keep me walking the course in faithfulness to God to where I experience His goodness. Yeah. Uh, watch this. His goodness isn't just about what He can release into me monetarily. His goodness goes deeper than that. Yeah. His goodness is when you feel like in your flesh you want to give up. Yeah. But when His goodness comes and give you an inner strength yeah. and you're able to come in and say, Good morning, everybody. Yeah. And they don't even know that everything in your life is falling apart. But the joy of the Lord will come 
spirit of God. Come what may, you feel and know I can walk with my head, have my head held high because I can feel God is with me and I feel him right here with me. Yes, indeed. No matter what, I know I'm good. That's it. There is a confidence yes. I have, an inner peace, an inner validation. Hallelujah. I can feel the Holy Spirit bearing witness with my spirit that I am by which I cry out of Father. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That is when you understand and know, without a doubt, Come on. that you have oh, yeah. encountered oh, yeah. the glory of God. That's right. yes. And I love the glory of God because it's not a one time event. Come yeah. on. Say that. Say it that. It's a daily experience yes, indeed it is. as you walk with God. Yes, indeed it is. The person that tried to sabotage you. The glory of God will come and make them become your come on. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Watch The glory of God. Yes. Ooh. Mama, watch yourself. Watch yourself. When a man's ways please in the Lord, yes. he will make him and his enemies yes. Yes. live at peace with him. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That's accomplished in the glory of God. The glory of God so holy and so great that in Ezekiel's day, the glory left the temple. Yes. And it was a tragic day because the people were so caught up in idolatry and sin and the neglect of God because God is a jealous God. Yes. And because of that, the glory left. Mm -hmm. And when the glory left, there was no hope. This teaches me that when you have the glory of God and the personage of Jesus Christ and in the presence of the Holy Spirit, you have a hope and a confidence that this life is not wrong. That's right. I'm not going to live just for this life. Come on. That's right. I, I have a greater hope that's far beyond this earth. Yes. Far beyond. Come on. And I'm focused and ready to reach that place to where I can live with Him eternally. That is the hope of our Yes, yes it is. Oh, what about you today that are watching? Mm -hmm. You who are in this place today. Mm -hmm. My God, that's right. You who are gathered in this atmosphere mm -hmm. in his holy presence. Mm -hmm. You have now heard the word of the Lord. Oh, yes. What place have you been in? Mm -hmm. What place are you in now? What adjustments must you? It's always good to know and hear where I am. Yes. So that I will know if I'm in the wrong place. Yes, Mr. May, come on. I need to start making some changes. That's it. That's it. To line up in the proper posture. I believe that there is a move of God coming. Are you in the right posture and place for the glory to come to your house? Jesus. Ooh. Are you in the proper posture for the glory of the Lord to visit your church? Are you in the right position? Or are you letting so much of life keep you unstable? Shifting from place to place, depending on the day. Yeah, that's it. Keeping you out of proper position for the glory. I believe in this room the glory of God is about to save somebody's life. Yes, yes indeed. Uh, oh yes it is. Oh yes it is. The glory of God can save your children. The glory of God yes. through his amazing grace can reach glory to God the unreachable. Yes, yes it can. We see the song that says for your glory I'll do it. Yeah. Just to see you. Yeah. I will do anything. Jesus. Are you really serious about that? My, my, my God. Oh, my. For your glory. For your glory. What if God says, let it go? Come on, Pastor. Come on. What if God says, I'm calling you to prayer, I'm calling you closer to me? Will you obey? Will you be like Moses? What if God is saying, even right now, 
I'm calling you to do this, I'm calling you to do that. I need you to shift this and shift that because I'm going to come and meet you right where you are. What do you love more than the Lord? That you cannot fully and wholly conform to what he's asking. Jesus. It's a very empty and vain seek, Brother Derek. It's a very empty and vain seek. To only try to seek God based on what I think He wants. That's it. That's wow. it. Jesus. Wow. I won't find Him. The Bible says, and you shall seek me, and you shall find me. You shall seek me and find me. He says, when you seek me, you'll search for me with all of your heart. That's yeah. it. That's it. Wow. What is your heart posture for God this morning? Yes, good. I want your glory, God. But what is your heart posture? The Bible is in there. What is your heart posture? Do you really want to know? God is not some specimen hmm. in the biology lab in high school that you can just try to dissect. Right. God does the dissecting. Hmm. You bring your life to Him and He begins to fix and operate yeah. and shift and change. Yeah. No, no. So when you say, God, I want you, I want to know you, wow. show me your glory, reveal to me who you are. Sometimes you must empty yourself out of everything that you think you are. That's it. And say, God, I don't want to get this. Yes. Teach me and show me your ways. I want to know you more intimately. Show me the thing that makes you God. Yes, God. The essence of who you are. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. Don't be surprised if God says, I will forgive them. Yeah. What? Why would you say I'm going to get the wrong way out of me? Change us. 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 Change us.
change our countenance. God, we want to be like Moses and shine in your glory. We want to be like Moses, that we have no need, hallelujah, to fulfill these natural fleshly appetites, God. Let us be satisfied with the abundance of your presence. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we want to see your glory. We want to experience your glory. Show us the thing that makes you. Show yourself strong and mighty. You are the King of glory. You are the Lord who is mighty in power. Fight for us, God. Cover us. Give us insight, wisdom, and understanding that we may live a life that's according to your divine design. Let us not live out of the blueprints of this world. Let us not govern our lives according to the way and the pattern and the fashion of this world. But purge us. Purge your people. Purify yeah. your people. Yeah. Sanctify your people. Yeah. Hallelujah. That they may live according to your holy design and fulfill your will in them. Until you come again, Lord. To receive us as your own. Strengthen now these your people who are here and who are watching all around God right now. Let them be touched by your glory. Let them cry out to you. Show me your glory. I want you, God. I want you. Let them not love anything else more than you. Let them see the necessity of you. Let them know that you are not a luxury God, but let them know that they need you, that you are more important than the very breath that they breathe. Yes. Yes, Lord. Father, we will honor you and bless your name forever and ever. Let us not leave this place the way that we come, but let us leave with a hunger and a desire to pursue you. Let us leave with a hunger and a desire to run after you. And then let us find you. Because we are seeking you with a heart that is craving and hungry and thirsting for the true and living God. Forgive us for any time, Father God, that you showed us your ways and we cast it by us. Forgive us for any time you've spoken to us and we disrespected your word. We treated you with contempt. We repeat in this place this morning. And we say, if you would show us again, reveal yourself again, we will not take this moment lightly. You tell us to wake up at 5 a.m., get up in the morning and seek your face, we will seek your face. We honor you in this place and we believe that it is so and it is done. Let these, your people, now experience your glory. Let them see the glory, even our family that's watching right now, Father, in their homes. I pray that they would feel that experience your yes, glory God. on yes, their God. children, on their marriages, in their families, yes, on their jobs, in their personal lives. Let them experience your glory yes. like never before. Yes, in God. Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, God. And we say amen. Thank you, amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. amen. 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 Come on, give God praise and the God. Hallelujah, so that's God in position. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, get in that place, get in that place. Come on, now they need to hear it for real. Minister to them, say, get in that place. The Lord is calling you to that place. May God bless you and God keep you. I love you in the presence of the Lord. You're not the hands of Brother Derek. Yeah.
Lord God, and heal his body. Lord God. Yes, God. Heal his body, Lord God. Yes. And continue to do your great work, yes. Lord God. Yes, yes, yes. And Lord God, these gifts that you've given us, Lord.